Your liver is a very important organ, which should be obvious from the name alone. Without it, you're definitely a debtor. Choline and its metabolite, betaine, also known as trimethylglycine, or TMG for short, are required for the liver to work properly. That is part of the reason you will die if you don't have enough of them. But as with taurine and glycine, there is a big laundry list of reasons to want it in your life. Whether it's better resistance to pain, better gut health, killing cancer cells, losing weight, removing liver fat from the body, or even putting on more muscle while losing fat at the same time, it has it all. On top of all of that, it has modes of action in common with many anti-aging supplements, which raises some very interesting possibilities. <laughs> I'd buy that for a dollar. <laughs> Choline is an essential nutrient, meaning you cannot live without it, unlike fiber, which you definitely can live without. Its ultimate purpose in the body is to donate methyl groups to various processes that must occur, and it does so in the form of TMG. TMG is three methyl groups combined with a glycine molecule. Choline metabolizes into TMG, which could also be described as a more active form of choline. These nutrients are largely interchangeable, but in some circumstances you may actually want to have choline or phosphatidylcholine. Since TMG has more methyl groups to lend, then on a pound for pound basis, it's probably more efficient to use betaine or TMG when you supplement instead of choline. However, choline has many other uses in the body, such as creating stable cell membranes in the form of phosphatidylcholine. The body can only turn so much TMG into choline at a time, so it makes sense to take a bit of both to make sure there's enough for other processes. Some feeding studies in animals find they mature better when a ratio of choline to TMG in supplements is 50-50. As an adult who gets plenty of choline in the diet from meat and eggs, I just take some TMG and don't bother with choline, but this is critical nutrition for growing children and for animals. Choline is particularly necessary for proper brain development. This requires choline for cell membrane phospholipid creation and possibly for other uses. It's been shown in very long-term experimental data that prenatal supplementation of choline leads to children with much better attention span and also IQs. In animal studies, it's been shown that prenatal deficiency causes permanent learning and memory issues. That sounds scary, but what is truly scary is that less than 10% of the Western population has sufficient choline levels, let alone optimal choline levels. That is yet another health disaster we can blame on Ansel Keys and those who founded his research. The best available source of choline is eggs, and the second best source is red meat, both of which are high in saturated fat and cholesterol, which Keys fraudulently vilified. It's shown that in seniors, the higher the dietary choline levels, the higher their cognitive abilities. Not only is choline needed for building healthy brain cells and the myelin sheath that protects your neuron, but it's also vital for proper mitochondrial health. In neurons, mitochondrial death in the brain is synonymous with dementia. Over time, more and more mitochondria die in brain cells, and eventually the whole cell dies. A low-carb diet can slow this, and fasting can even reverse it to some degree. Taurine and glycine also affect the mitochondria and help stave off dementia, so it would not be surprising that choline and its metabolite TMG can have the same effect because of their benefits for the mitochondria. Choline is also vital for brain health in other ways. For instance, it is necessary to create the neurotransmitter acetylcholine, which in turn is needed to create yet other neurotransmitters. Since acetylcholine has been linked to involvement in schizophrenia, it should perhaps be unsurprising that choline is also linked to symptom reduction in schizophrenia. Nothing like a cure, of course, and only from animal studies. 
But one could speculate that choline deficiency during human development could be a contributing factor to the onset of this somewhat mysterious disease. This is a disease that has grown dramatically over time, even as choline deficiency in the diet has grown. Like taurine, which is critical to all protein creation and cell membrane function in the body, choline is absolutely critical for brain development. I have to wonder how much mental illness could be eradicated by simply giving people a proper diet, especially pregnant women and young children. Not to mention antisocial behavior. Control the Belfar 7. My mission is in jeopardy. Destroy the planet. Repeat. Destroy the planet. Well, I'm not here to win any popularity contests. Oh, you haven't! You haven't! Oh, no, far from it! Choline reduces neuroinflammation, which is present in all forms of mental illness. And it also protects the mitochondria. That's no doubt part of the reason it lessens demyelation of the myelin sheath in animal experiments for multiple sclerosis research. It also lessens some negative autoimmune reactions, reduces C-reactive protein levels, and it inhibits inflammatory cytokines. TMG is an osmolite, meaning it helps the body regulate fluids. This is likely part of the reason it has shown to greatly improve gut health, even greatly reducing the symptoms of the nightmarish condition ulcerative colitis. Choline and betaine also both help fight cancer, especially when it comes to colon, prostate, and breast cancer. In fact, it seems to help in just about every malady doctors might diagnose you with. Hang on a second. This one. Oh. Uh, Hurry up! This one. This one goes in your mouth. That was quite a mouthful, and I still haven't gotten to the main thing that choline and TMG are good for. Methylation in the liver. Without this, your liver cannot function properly. Especially when it comes to removing fat from the liver. It's really liver fat that ultimately leads to type 2 diabetes, heart disease, cancer, and on and on. Now the liver. The liver, I believe, is one of the unsung heroes or unappreciated heroes when it comes to um, uh, human metabolism. And there are two processes I want to highlight, and that is the liver's ability to both make lipid and to make glycogen, the storage form of glucose. So it's uh, the liver's one of the one of the tricks the liver has to once li once ins uh, glucose has been pulled in, it will um, store it. So it's just a way to help. Um, buffer the glucose levels in the blood. If glucose levels are high, the liver can pull in some of that more than what it needs for its own energy demands. And then when glucose goes low, the liver can break that glycogen down and share it with the blood or with the body. So that's the de definitions there, the production of fat and the production of, of glycogen. Insulin, of course, as it has its hand in so many things, also has its hand in these events as well. In particular, it stimulates both of them. Insulin will both st stimulate the production of lipid and the production of glycogen. With insulin resistance in the liver, there's an interesting phenomenon, and it is reflective of the fact that insulin resistance is not just a global effect within the cell. It is not that every event that insulin used to do is not happening. And, and let me get into that, to, just to make that clear. When the liver is insulin resistant, lipogenesis is still activated when insulin comes knocking at the door, so to speak, when insulin binds its insulin receptor. So to make that clear, even if the liver is insulin resistant, insulin can still stimulate lipogenesis. In contrast, <clears throat> in the insulin resistant liver, insulin is less able to make glycogen. So it's less able to tell the liver to store glucose. And this loss of stimulating glycogenesis means we have a reduction. We actually end up, insulin loses its ability to prevent the breakdown of glycogen. So now we have glycogenolysis. This event is disrupted in insulin resistance. And so now we have a liver that is supposed to be holding on to glucose. It's actually letting it go. But it's not supposed to. Remember, that's the pathology here. Insulin is trying to stimulate, or it ought to be stimulating glucose uptake and storage. It's not working anymore. 
so the liver doesn't get the signal not to break down glycogen, and so it does. It's not being inhibited, the glycogenolysis, and this of course drives up blood glucose levels. So once again, if we look at this paradigm of the progression towards full-blown type 2 diabetes, with the liver being insulin resistant, we've pushed that a little further down the road. The patient has progressed, progressed a little further towards full-blown type 2 diabetes. So they're getting this mounting hyperglycemia. Choline and TMG have been shown to help reverse this. And without them, it's literally impossible to reverse it no matter what you do. That's because your body just can't mobilize your liver fat and get rid of it without choline. Fasting is the quickest way to stimulate liver autophagy and clean out the liver, but choline and TMG are still required for this to work. So consider putting some eggs into your diet before fasting, or else just supplement it. In fact, it is probably better to do a little bit of each. I eat plenty of eggs, and I also currently take one gram of TMG per day. If you have cognitive issues, or if you're still developing, adding some supplemental choline might also be a good idea. It's also good for puppies. As I've mentioned in the past, choline and TMG are also required for the liver to detoxify homocysteine. While vegans tell you to restrict the methionine to reduce homocysteine, it's important to realize this doesn't actually work. In reality, glutathione production requires methionine, in order to be created in the body. That is why those on a keto diet have twice as much glutathione in the body. Vegans make less glutathione due to methionine deficiency and also use more of it up to clean out the glycation from their high carb diet. And that's why they're so obsessed about antioxidants because when you're not eating meat, you have a very bad situation going on your body where reactive oxygen species are running wild. The donor methyl groups in TMG or choline can be used to methylate the homocysteine and renders it harmless again. In reality, homocysteine levels are driven by metabolic health, not protein in the diet. If your liver is healthy and you have enough of theonine in the diet, your body will easily take care of any homocysteine created by splitting methionine up to make glutathione and then detoxifying the resulting homocysteine. If your liver is overburdened, then it cannot complete this process. TMG will directly add methylation to the body. Choline does so more slowly and gently, so it is safer to take in larger quantities. I would limit TMG supplementation to 1-2 to two grams at most, but choline does not have these issues, and in general, the more you have in the diet, the better. Now, vegans have also said that choline causes TMAO and that this is a very bad byproduct. But actually, it causes TMAO in the gut, not in the bloodstream. Again, this is a very healthy thing because TMAO in the gut actually fights against cancer, whereas TMAO in the bloodstream is a big problem because it's a sign of a deficiency. But if you're eating meat, you're not going to have that deficiency. You're not going to have this issue. I'd also like to add that when you take L-cysteine, this completely stops the process of splitting up methionine in the first place because it's the L-cysteine that the body needs to make these substances. This also applies to taurine because if you take enough taurine, then your body will stop making the taurine and you won't have to split up any methionine and you won't have any homocysteine produced so it actually helps a great deal to supplement taurine and especially l-cysteine in the body and it's also going to help a lot to supplement glycine because that's going to help you more easily make glutathione and this is usually the limiting factor and i take six grams of taurine and six grams of glycine every day and i take one gram of l-cysteine your liver health is essentially synonymous with metabolic health. As I covered in my video on fasting frequency, it is mainly the autophagy from fasting that extends lifespan in animal fasting experiments. So, if you leave this presentation with one thought, it should be this one. And the reason why is that it is not because you get old, that autophagy stops working. 
It is rather that when autophagy stops working, you get old. And why this is important is because if your autophagy or your autophagic mechanism is not working properly, you can hack it to repair it, bring it back into balance, and you can rejuvenate yourself. I was given five years to live at the age of 39. I did various other interventions. It is possible to stop diagnoses where you are told you have just a few years left to live. But the mechanism is extremely complex. And that's why if there is just one missing piece, for instance, the lysosome that I showed you in the earlier picture, you know, the little orange ball, if just one piece is missing, then it's a problem for the entire uh, apparatus to work. One of the main reasons for that is simply that it so efficiently clears out the liver and puts it very quickly into a healthy state. Choline and TMG or trimethylglycine, also known as betaine, are largely interchangeable nutrients that are critical for human health and especially fetal development. They are also very helpful in elderly care because they aid greatly in cognitive and attention issues. And in fact, they stimulate autophagy as well. On top of all of that, they modulate oxidative stress. And that's one of the main causes or maybe the main cause of aging, disease and obesity. So it should not be surprising that choline and TMG can help fight cancer, which has also been shown in studies or that it's been shown to aid in weight loss, or that it's been shown to help in body recomposition for athletes. While I could not find any animal longevity studies on choline or TMG, with all these anti-aging mechanisms, it's only a matter of time before someone wealthy who has an interest in a longer, healthier life funds this research. Thank you. Thank you, all dear friends, for coming to my birthday! 7.45 and I'm still awake. 